trimming a bowl on the potter's wheel. At the level of the thickness of the piece to see what I have to trim. I'm going to trim it actually on this one. When I came in this morning, these uh, were too moist to trim. And the consistency that I'm looking for is an exact stage called leather hard. I know a piece is leather hard because it's at that moment in drying when it's no longer tacky to the back of my fingers. This is not sticking. Like just at that moment. It was sticking five minutes ago, but it's not sticking now. It's much easier to dry the piece to leather hard than it is to try to re-moisten it back to leather hard. Always cover your pieces until you're here to watch them drying. If they're too moist, bring them in, put them in front of the fan, turn the fan on, let the fan run on them, turning them about every five or ten minutes, a quarter of a turn, a quarter of a turn, so that they dry evenly all the way around. You'll start out with them on their base until the rim gets strong enough to support them, and you can do them on their, their rim. This is the thickness of the bowl that I did yesterday. And what I want to do is to decide in this stage where do I want to trim the foot. And the way I do that is I put a finger on the inside and where the floor turns into wall, right where the end of my long finger is there, that's where I want the outside of my foot to go. So floor to wall outside of my foot. And then what I'm going to do is on this one, I have enough clay that I can do a small foot ring, and I'm aiming for perfectly equal thickness throughout the wall of the piece. So I'm going to trim that away. I have just enough clay here to do a, a small foot ring, a little donut of clay, and you'll see how that will work in just a minute. But you see from these lines roughly how much I'm going to trim away. Note that the width of this foot is equal to or somewhat greater than the thickness of the rim. This clay is going to be pulled away and this clay is going to be pulled away. So the way I test it, floor to wall, I make a mark on the outside, I repeat that in several spots. That gives me my guideline for where I'm going to trim the outside of my foot. And I'll take this piece over and I'll go ahead and start trimming it. So you set your wheel up just as you did before. The tools that you're going to need for this are your small trimming tool, possibly your bigger trimming tool, and your needle tool. You'll also need clay of the same color that you made your piece out of. So in this instance, this is brown stoneware, and I've got a big handful of brown stoneware clay. The first thing that I need to do is I'm going to look at the rings that are on the top of the wheel head. These are perfect circles, perfectly aligned with the center of the wheel. So I'm going to put my piece right in the middle of that bullseye. So here you can see there's a partial moon here. Then I'm going to actually just put it exactly in the middle of that for the rim. That's going to get me close. You can see that it's exactly aligned. I put my head right over top to be sure that it's really close. But it's not going to be 100% in the center because the base is slightly off. I'm going to turn the wheel. I hold my needle tool right in front of me, right at the face of a clock, 6 o'clock. And I'm gradually coming in millimeter by millimeter by millimeter, fairly fast wheel speed, till I then will touch the surface. Touch, touch, touch. Now I come down so that I see where that line begins and where that line ends. I turn the metal part of the wheel head so I get that line equally centered. Starts here, ends there. Here's the exact center of that line and I push on that exact center of that line to push it towards the middle of the wheel. I erase that line so I don't get confused and now I'm going to take my needle tool again and I'm going to um, Turn my wheel fairly fast, go in millimeter by millimeter, gradually going in, and when the line is drawn evenly all the way around like it is now, then I know it's exactly in the center and I can go ahead and trim this piece. Sometimes it'll take 
more than one or two tries, it'll take several to get it exactly in the center of the wheel so the line from your needle tool is drawn all the way around. I take two golf ball sized pieces of clay and I roll them up to the side of the piece and simultaneously I press down on them to anchor them to the wheel. If I was to just push one, the piece would scooch off to the side. So I put four pieces. If you're concerned about your piece, you could put eight, sixteen, as many as you feel that you need. I've, you see my marks that I did, where I did floor to wall, that's where I want the outside of my foot to be. I'm going to describe that as a guideline. That's going to be my goal. The next thing that I'm going to do, decide between the big tool and the little tool. Either one would work, but this tends to bounce around less, and I really like the square end of this for being able to give me a square line. I'm going to carve away the clay right up to my guideline on the side, and now I'm going to come down and go towards what I believe to be equal thickness based on my feeling of the interior shape from before. This bowl is very similar to the one that I made the marks on. Note that my arms are braced against my legs and that my two hands are touching together so that my hand is wobbling uh, very little. If you, My fingers are also right down on the metal cutting edge. Some people find it easier to hold the tool like a pencil. You should be shaving off a ribbon of clay just like that. So there's the outside of my foot. I have enough clay. A foot ring is not required, but I have enough clay so I'm able to do a foot ring and that's going to mean I carve out to where I set up this guideline on the inside. I had a guideline on the outside, a guideline on the inside. My goal is to get equal thickness throughout the piece with the foot ring, if I have one, again it's not required, but if I have one, the foot ring is slightly thicker than the rim of the piece or equal to the rim of the piece. I vary the angle of my tool so that I leave a fairly smooth surface. If I hold my tool at one angle, like this, I could end up gouging the surface. Instead, I'm going to slightly vary the angle of my tool up and down so that I leave a smooth, even, ungouged surface. When I'm finished, I will, uh, and I'm going to make this foot a little bit thinner now. When I'm finished, I can smooth this out with my finger. Or sometimes we'll use a metal rib just to smooth and burnish that surface. When I'm completely done, I can take um, my tool or a pencil and put my initials. And then I want to be sure to put my class symbol. In this instance, it's two big circles. That'll get it onto the, the same bisque wear shell. I'm going to double check now, take this off, I'm going to double check the thickness by feeling on the inside and outside to see that I have equal thickness throughout. If I didn't, then I would put it back onto the wheel again and re-trim it. I'm finished with this piece, so I'm now going to put it on the greenware shelf on its rim so that it can dry evenly. This will dry it evenly on one side. If I was to put it on the greenware shelf this way, it would try two sides here, one side there, and I might get a crack in the bottom. When I finish up with this, the last thing I want to do, clean up on this is much easier than on the, on the from the wheel. These trimmings all go just straight into the slaking uh, barrel, and then any of the other uh, Clay, I will come back with the sponge to clean this up. But these can go right into the brown stoneware. So they can be sure you get into the clay the barrel that you're using.